Hello, and uh, welcome to Pawpaw's Barn. I'm uh, starting a new project today. We're, uh, we're actually in the barn today. Uh, so I'm starting this new project, and I haven't put up a video in a while. I just thought I'd video this one as we kind of went along with it and make a new one to, to post. It's a it's golf cart. It doesn't run. I'm going to be trying to get it going. That's what the what the project's going to be. And uh, but anyway, I was thinking. Uh, I believe I'm going to replace the welcome video or the intro video on my channel with this one. And so before we get started on the golf cart, I thought I'd say a little bit about that. Uh, name of my channel is Paw Paul's Barn. Uh, however, I'm not Paw Paul. <laughs> my name's Mike, and uh, all my grandkids call me Paul. Uh, I have uh, six of them. I got six grandkids, and they'll be in videos from time to time. And, and <clears throat> the uh, the Paw Paul's Barn. This was Paw Paul was what my kids called my dad, and uh, instead of Grandpa, it was Paw Paul, and. Uh, this was his barn, and uh, unfortunately, we lost him uh, back in 2013, just before Thanksgiving. And uh, but this was his barn, and, and uh, that's the name of my channel, and kind of where a lot of my videos center around. That's what goes on down here. It's always been a favorite place for. Uh, I grew up here, and and uh, my kids grew grew up here and played around the barn, and. And now all my grandkids is growing up here, and so anyway, it's just that's the name of the channel, it's Paul's Barn, and, and uh, I don't know what else. To, it's it's uh, not a homesteading channel or a prepper channel, but we live that lifestyle. I like to garden and and uh, fix things. A lot of it's not a how-to video. So, because a lot of times it's maybe how not to, I don't know, or how to do something really cheap because everything's always on budget. So it's kind of, I, we've, you know, I like to fix things and and some of it's just home video stuff of you like, you know, kids playing or doing something goofy or, and uh, do some gardening stuff, do some cooking stuff, and do some fixing, repairing things. And, that sort of thing. Travel video once in a while. Uh, just kind of a mix. Just a more. It's more or less a a place for me to put my home videos. And I don't know for some strange reason. Sometimes we like to watch other people's home videos. I know I do. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's uh, that's what the channel's all about. And uh, just thought I'd throw that in there before we. Before we get on with the with the project. So anyway, back to the golf cart project. This golf cart is uh, I'll show it to you there. It, this golf cart was gifted to me by my brother-in-law. Thanks, Ray. Awesome present. Uh, it is a nineteen. 87 Columbia Par Car. Uh, it didn't run. No, it doesn't run. Um, my brother-in-law said that he it needed a battery, and he was pretty sure it was going to need a carburetor. And it's been something for a long time, so I I agree. It probably does. Probably will need a uh, a carburetor. But uh, when I I started troubleshooting it already before I decided to make a video series about getting it up and running, and so I've done a little troubleshooting on it already. Kind of started to get into it, but uh, I can catch you up to speed here real quick on what I've found thus far. Um, the it didn't have some of the initial tests that I did on it was uh, I uh, pulled the spark plug and put a an ignition tester in the plug line and and cranked it over and it's not getting any fire at all so I uh, thought uh, a little basic checked with a voltmeter and I'm getting voltage up to the coil and the coil appeared to be good had good 
resistance through it and everything checked out on the coil didn't have uh, any reason to think it was a problem so I uh, dug into it to get to the points I thought well points condenser maybe that was most likely they're, they're pretty simple circuit so there can't be too much else you know to go wrong and uh, so anyway I, I opened up and uh, I was kind of surprised to find there's an electronic ignition module in there and my first thought was somebody's probably converted it I didn't know 87 whether it have electronic ignition or not this little animal right here replaces the points and sure enough this is the first year I got on the internet and done a little research and and this is it this is the first year they put electronic ignition on so it's original and uh, that little bad boy right there hundred and eighty one dollars <laughs> wow that might be the end of the golf cart. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, I kind of had done a lot of research, really searched around, and that really is the cheapest I can find them anywhere. It's $181. However, after quite a bit of research and studying and reading different posts and stuff, I, uh, I found out that this is a little mounting plate in the bottom of the distributor that the module bolts to and I found out that they didn't change anything you can buy the electronic ignition kit and put them on older golf carts that had points to upgrade it to uh, electronic ignition if you want and you can buy the older plate to put one high cap that's puff Puff says hi. <laughs> uh, you can buy the older plate and put back on the newer ones if you want to go back and make a point system on the newer ones. Well, that's what I'm going to do because points is a lot cheaper to buy than than uh, that ignition. So that's what I'm going to try to do. And I and then I researched it all out. And with, by the time I buy the plate and the points and the condenser and all the parts, I'm going to be less than half the cost I think for under a for under about $75 under $100 it's about $75 I will be able to uh, convert this back to points but take it one step further what my plan to do today is I am going to see if I can modify this plate I'm going to see if I can grind them a little bolt stubs off that the ignition bolts to and then over here I have found in my junk drawers some ignition points this one here I thought was going to work but it's too big it won't go down in it's just too big to fit down in there I don't know what they're out of some old Ford car or something maybe but anyway I found a set of points in a condenser that I think I can do a little Popal's barn engineering. <laughs> and I'm going to try my best to make my own homemade point system to go in this cart and get it running again. If it don't work, you guys won't ever see this video. <laughs> if it does work, I'll celebrate. So anyway, that's where I'm at right now. Okay, so I got this little cutoff wheel on my Dremel tool. And my plan is to try to just grind them little stubs right off. that'll work so now the next step is to mount this back in the golf cart and get it so the adjustment screws is right in the middle of the slot so I've got a little room each way and then get the engine on top dead center and the cam so I'll can put my points right where the cam will be opening up the points breaking them right as the piston comes to top dead center so I kind of got to place it where I want it and mark it and then we'll have to drill some mounting holes for new points okay 
So I've got the plate mounted in there where I'm going to uh, mark my holes where I need to drill to mount the points on it. Uh, kind of on a side note, just explain a little bit about this and what I'm doing. If you don't know anything about golf cart engines whatsoever, um, then you're in good company because I've never worked on a golf cart engine ever in my life. <laughs> and they are unique little animals, let me tell you. Uh, for one thing, first of all, they're a two-cycle engine. A two-cycle engine means that it does everything in a in two cycles or one complete rotation. It it exhausts the exhaust out on the downstroke, it intakes intake on the upstroke, it compresses it, and it fires all in that one so the two cycles as opposed to a four stroke engine that, that goes around. So therefore the plug needs to fire every time the piston is at top dead center. So and we want these points that I'm uh, putting in road let me go back just a little bit. I was going to tell you a little bit about the golf cart engine. Uh, the golf cart engine being unique in that it's two cycle. Uh, it ha it, the starter engine stays engaged the entire time. It don't have a Bendix or a drive on the end of it to start it and then back out. They use the starter engine. They energize it. It's in it spins the motor. The motor starts. The mo the starter motor continues to spin. Then you overspin the motor. And it becomes a generator. So it's, it, that's kind of odd. Okay, and probably the biggest oddity of all is that this little engine runs forward and backwards. There's no transmission as such, you know, where you actually change the direction of the car by uh, reversing a gear. The engine starts and runs forward to make the golf cart go forward. And then it starts, you, when you come to a stop, you let off the gas pedal, it completely kills the engine. And then when you flip it to reverse and you step back down on it, it starts the engine in reverse. And the engine's running backwards and backs you up. It's, it's really, really kind of wild. But anyway, for what we need to do is I needed to assure that I had, before I cut the holes to mount these points, I needed to make sure that my piston was at the top dead center position and what I did was I have the plug out and I stuck that screwdriver down in the cylinder head where the right in where the spark plug went and then it's kind of hard to do this with one hand I'm holding the camera but then I turned the fan by hand and I turned it back and forth and, to, and, and I could feel the piston rising and falling until I got it right where I knew it was right at the very top of its stroke. I'd go down a little ways and then back up and down a little ways. And I kept doing that until I, until I knew I had it parked right on the top dead center position. Now, then, after I, I kind of got down here and got to looking at it, after I found that, and I didn't had no idea they was on here, but down in this fan... I'm going to point it down in there, and I've got a, a drop light here, kind of make a little more light. I don't know if you can see that down in there or not. I hope so. I'm going to video this kind of by faith, and then I'll look at it and see if I got it. But down, right down in here, on that fan, there's two little marks. I'll play this back. If I didn't get it real good, I'll just put a still picture in here and show you the marks. I'll take a snapshot of it and I'll insert it right there. But there's two little bitty marks on that rotating fan. And then on the edge of the distributor housing, which be this part right here, there's a little dimple that sticks up on it. That's the pointer. When those two marks are over that little pointer, it's top dead center. That's the timing mark. And actually, I found it top dead center and it was a little bit off to one side. And I know that was, you know, it was on top dead center. I was really particular about it and got it right at the top of the stroke. And I looked down there and those timing marks was off a little bit. What I'm guessing is, is they want it to fire a little bit before top dead center for the inertia of the engine running. Now, I'm not sure how they do that in reverse. The only thing I can guess is Apparently this little engine will start and run in reverse, 
probably just don't run as well in reverse when you're backing up. They want it probably to have power and go fast and work really good in forward, and then probably just starts and runnings in reverse adequate enough to back you up. It's not like you're going to be drag racing it in reverse. So, so anyway, that's where we're at right now. Uh, back to my little point thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to position these points right in here and find out where they need to be located on that plate for them to be breaking the cam will be breaking the points right now when it's on the timing mark and then I'm going to drill some mounting holes and mount those points to that plate and then put it all back in there and spin the engine and see if it open and closes the points like I want it to so I don't know how much I can't really hold it and do it and it's just going to be hard to do it so I'll just show you the end result when I get it all done okay I'll be right back okay so I made me a couple pencil marks on here right where I need to drill the holes to mount this point there's actually going to have to be three holes two screw holes to mount it but I'll need a third little hole drilled in it. These points, right there, the pivot point where the axle for the points to pivot on kind of sticks through. And it needs a little hole for that to recess back in there. And that's actually what they pivot on when you adjust them. And it's going to be really hard, and it's going to have to be very precise where it goes. So I can hold it over my pencil marks lined up, but then to see where that, I can't, I don't know how to mark that. So what I'm going to try to do is, I can't get in under it with, to mark it with a pencil, but I can see approximately where it goes on there. So I'm going to take this little piece of masking tape and just stick the masking tape on there temporarily, like that, right over where it's going to go. And then I'm going to line the points up with my pencil marks where they need to go. It's about right there pretty good right there and right there I think that's it right there so now I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going to press real hard on that pivot point try to make a mark kind of wiggle it try to make a mark in that masking tape bingo I got me a little mark where I need to drill. So that's going to be the first one that I drill. This is kind of a one-shot deal. If I ruin this, I'm out of business. <laughs> I knew one of those plates was $40. <laughs> that's crazy. But anyway, I'm going to drill that pivot hole first. And then I'll just set it back in there before I drill my mounting holes. I think I'll put it all back in the golf cart and double check because if I get that pivot hole a little bit wrong my holes are slotted so I can still allow for it a little bit I could move one of my mounting holes here to make up the difference it'll be my like second chance I'll double check and make sure I get that pivot hole in exactly the right spot so anyway, that's my next step. I'm going to drill that hole. I'll see that that fits in it and pivots in it all right. And then I'm going to mount it all back in the golf cart and double check my holes that I'll need to tap for screws to uh, screw this all together. And the screws are going to have to be very short. I'll probably have to make them too. I'll probably have to find a couple of machine screws and then my little cut off grinder again I'll probably have to cut them off and dress the threads and get them just right because there can't be anything protruded on the back side of this very much they can a little bit 
In the distributor housing, there's a little indentation ring that goes around under this that allow them to fit through just a very minute amount, but not much. I mean, we're talking like less than an eighth of an inch, probably. So it's going to be some pretty fine, precise engineering on the length of those screws, as well as the position of them to make sure that it's timed right. So anyway, there we go. Just like that. I think it's going to be okay. It gives a little hole there for that to go through. I'll peel that tape off of it. And pivots on it. It's a little bit tight. I might have to step up to the next size drill bit. I'm not sure. I'm going to peel the tape off there, dress it up, kind of ream it out just a little bit. And see how it feels it's just a little bit tight on it but yeah i think that's going to be good enough it's not like it has to spin on it or anything it's just to adjust it it's just a pivot on it for adjustment so probably leave it just like it is i think that part worked okay so i drilled and tapped the first screw hole here i used an 832 bit and i found a little 832 screw that i want now what I'm going to do is I'm just like I did those little studs that stuck up there to hold the electronic ignition, how I ground them off. I'm going to do the same thing with them. Now see they're way too long sticking through here on the back. So I'll cut them off flush when I get the other one in there. Uh, but I'm going to, well I'll have to cut this one off. And then I'm going to put this back in and check again to make sure I've got this positioned exactly where I want it before I screw drill and tap that that last one and uh, like I said they're little 1032 screws I just drilled them out and then tapped them and uh, so far so good it seems to be working real good okay one other thing I had to do was that this the first hole that I drilled that the little I don't know if you can see that right there where the little pivot went through it actually had a little ridge on the back side after it went all the way through the pivot had a little bit of a ridge that was holding it up away from the mountain plate just a little bit even when I put the screw on it so what I did was that screw hole the hole that I drilled earlier I took a much bigger drill drill bit and I countersunk that hole just a little bit to give that lip some room to lay down in there and that's the only other thing that I've done and so anyway, I'm going to put these, this part back on the cart now and double check that last hole and uh, I'll be able to do the same thing to it. Uh, so far, it's looking pretty good. Okay, and here it is back in there. I've got the, that's the one screw that I've got in there right now. And this one here, when I, I got it in and everything lined up with where I want it, got it about in the middle of my adjustment slots here so I'll be able to go either direction to set the timing if I don't have it just exactly right and when it rolls around turn it you see the cam load coming up when it rolls up the points break 
and then back down. So I think it's sitting right where I want it right now. But while it was in here, I just took a center punch and I went ahead and made me a little hole right there. I punched it with a center punch right where I want to drill and tap it. So now I'll take them back out, take it back to the vise, drill a hole through it, tap the threads on it. And this part is looking pretty good. Okay, I think that's gonna work. I think I haven't found another screw for that one yet. I thought I had one a while ago, but it was it was wrong. So I gotta go dig out another little 1032 screw. Uh, okay, that I drilled a little hole in it. No, I was tapping the threads on it. <laughs> I got, got something I heard one time. I got to pass along. This was to any of the uh, women or wives or girlfriends or whatever out there that's watching this if you ever walk out into your husband or boyfriend's shop and he's working on something and if you see that he has these tools out just go back in the house just not a good time just just go back and leave him alone for a while <laughs> I think we're ready to put it back in. Where are you at? There you are over there. I think we're ready to put them back in. <laughs> I think we got it. I think we got it. Okay, now I have to take those out one more time because we've got to mount the condenser on it. Okay, now I'm just going to drill another hole and tap it right over in here in this area. I'll put another screw through just like I did the mounting screws here and here and it'll be to go through there to hold the condenser on there and just screw the condenser down to the plate right about like that so that wire can reach over there hook up where it needs to go and we will be ready to put this back together okay so condensers mounted it's all back together okay next step I'm going to take my old part here and I'm going to cut it off. I need that little rubber boot and that I'll just use a piece of this wire to, to hook up to my points and run out to my coil. Now you can test this. I knew that this one was bad. It wasn't sparking and it was the only component left in the circuit that it could be the problem. Uh, but I did test it after, you know, just to verify. But what you do is you take a diode tester, checker, meter, unhook your negative post from your coil now this has to be in the circuit to do it in the so you unhook and put your positive lead on the negative wire the black wire to here and then roll the engine over and the little rotor that fits in there has north and south facing magnets on it 
and as they roll by it's like a little proximity switch there's a little inductor in there and as that magnet passes by it it causes that diode to change the state and you can see that on your meter you should get about a half a volt of forward voltage and and then as you roll the engine over it'll go to an open circuit and then it'll go back and then to an open circuit and that's just mimicking what the points does by the way <clears throat> is any preppers out there <laughs> the prepper types that, that's uh, watching this video uh, what i just did by taking the electronics out and putting the circuit breaker points back in that's exactly what you have to do to make a vehicle emp hardened so you just get rid of the the little semiconductors and transistors that's real current sensitive and and replace them with the old stuff the old hard points and and that's uh, that's what makes it keep running that's why the old ones will run and the newer stuff gets knocked out so okay next step I'm back to work I'm gonna put these back in I'd really like to see a spark plug fire before I quit for the night <laughs> yeah baby we got fire